I've been watching a, a TV series at the moment about this survivalist who races against the clock and in crazy wild terrain, often against another military personnel or other survival expert to, to find a pinpoint place on a map, maybe two, three, four days later, and, and having to, to fend for themselves. Um, crazy stuff. I, I guess it gives me a sense of adventure when, when nothing else is happening in life. Um, there are times like this that are hard to navigate, aren't they? It's hard to keep your head up with nothing to look forward to. Even Christmas looks a bit like a mirage at the moment. Wouldn't it be great if there was someone who knows the way ahead? An expert, sort of, to follow. A, a, a sort of a, a guide, a sort of a master teacher of life. I want to take you back to a story of some 2,000 years ago about a fisherman in, on the shores of Galilee. His name was Simon and uh, he was a rugged grafter of hardy stock. He, was a, he had a keen eye for business and, and he was not one easily taken in. His brother Andrew was his crewmate and his comrades John and James often fished in the other boat with them. And uh, their names mean sons of thunder which I guess suggests they were strong men with short fuses, who knows. But I want us to tune into this story because in the midst of all of life's struggles, there was an expectation that there was something more. Their heads had been turned by these ancient predictions of a mysterious figure who would arrive on the scene as a liberator. Yet they'd had their full of the religious establishment and hierarchy of their day. They'd no time for hypocrisy or pretense. So life trundled on, trying to etch a living from the sea. One particular bad night, the crew had spent all night fishing. Relentless, energy-sapping work. And yet they had nothing to show for it. They didn't catch one fish, not one minnow was caught for the market. And I'm sure at that moment, Simon must have wondered, what was he going to do now? As they pulled into the, the, the shore, damp and tired, there was a crowd gathered around a man who was talking. This stranger asked to borrow Simon's boat to, to speak from uh, for, for the pressing crowd and Simon agreed and then he listened to this stranger. He wasn't religious yet the man spoke with authority he'd never, like he'd never seen or heard before. Just then the stranger whom his brother had identified told him to go into the deep water and cast his nets. Now I don't know about you but if a stranger tells me how to do my job I, I probably don't take it very well and you can forgive Simon for thinking what would you know about fishing? Do you not know that we've been out all night and caught nothing? And I'm sure he was frustrated after failing all night. I'm sure, I'm sure the prospects of being broke again plagued his mind. Yet there was something in the tone of this stranger's voice that was compelling and he had little choice but to, 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 to go with the flow. So. So they did. They took a leap of faith. They trusted an unknown man and they cast their nets. Suddenly, the net was bulging. It took all their strength to wrestle the net on board full of fish. So many, the lads on the other boat had to help. And on, both boats were almost sinking as they got to shore. It was the catch of their lives. Now this stranger had Simon's full attention. Andrew, his brother, had said he was special, that he was the one who was promised, the Messiah. Andrew appeared captivated. My question is this, is what was it about this unique man that made a rugged fisherman like Simon listen to him? There had been a brief encounter where Simon's mother-in-law had been made well in unexplained circumstances in his own home. Perhaps Perhaps that was a blessing, uh, maybe not, it probably depends on the mother-in-law in question. Um, John, the other man in the other boat, had, had been astonished by the catch of fish and he had some helpful insights because later on he wrote the Gospel of John and listen to what he said uh, later in, in his Gospel. He said, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. There was, this was the conclusion John had come to having spent much time with Jesus. He'd seen his glory, his majesty, his radiance. He was convinced that he originated from God above and he'd, 
everything he'd seen and heard just added to the credibility of what he had said. He'd never met anyone like it before. These hardy fishermen would have seen through a fraud. There was a genuineness about Jesus like no other. There was an integrity and a wholeness and a winsomeness about him, about this mysterious figure. Perhaps this explains Simon's response at the, as, as he came in from the, with the boats full of fish. He said this, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at his, Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Perhaps a humble response is the only legitimate response when we see the liberator for who he really is against the backdrop of our imperfect lives. May I suggest that just like Simon Peter, we need to follow someone who knows the way ahead. We need to do life as an apprentice with the master teacher. We need to follow a trusted voice. You see, what followed was that Peter, Andrew, James and John left all their fishing boats behind them and they followed Jesus into the unknown. We know what happened next, but they didn't know what was going to happen next. They followed Jesus blindly. Later, when some crowds who no longer listened to Jesus went away from him, Jesus asked his disciples, do you want to leave too? And again, Peter said this, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. The emphasis of Peter is that Jesus has the words of life. One of the books I'm reading at the moment by a guy called Dallas Willard, he says this, the, the really good news for humanity is that Jesus is now taking students in the master class of life. I hope that with me you, today you've seen of Jesus from a fresh vantage point, that this liberator calls you and I to follow him too. As you stare into 2021 through the depression of lockdown and the cloud of uncertainty, maybe, maybe you'll hear him, the master, calling you. And I think what he's saying is this, will you do life with me? Will you learn from me? Will you follow me, says Jesus. See, this mysterious God-man, Jesus Christ, love you and me so much that he died in our place. His words are full of life and spirit. He knows the path ahead. He, he can be our guide. He's uniquely qualified to do so. He can plot a course to wholeness, and he alone can make us complete. The real question is, are we prepared to humble ourselves by putting on his L plates and be his apprentice? Will you join Peter in getting on your knees before the master and conceding, I will follow you wherever that takes me. See, perhaps this dangerous uncharted path is the only safe place to be. What if following the master might be the greatest adventure of your entire life? So whatever voices you've trusted in the past, isn't it time you trusted in his voice today? I'm your host, Matt Totterby from Bundoran Bible Reflections. Have a good day.